So white rural rage. This is pretty amazing stuff. There's a new book out uh, titled White Rural Rage, The Threat to American Democracy. And it's got a lot of fascinating data in it. And I'm just going to share some of it with you. Uh, while white rural voters are only about 20% of the country, they control fully 42% of all the seats in the House of Representatives because of gerrymandering. They are measurably more bigoted and xenophobic than suburban or urban voters, 13 points more likely to hate on queer people, 15 points more likely to support Trump's Muslim ban. And fully 74% of the members of Congress who voted to overturn the 2020 election represented rural districts. Only 22% of city dwellers believe Trump won the 2020 election and Biden and Democrats stole it. A mind-boggling 47% of rural whites are certain that Joe Biden is illegitimately sitting in the White House. But there's an astonishing paradox here, and this is what just blows my mind, is that Republican politicians regularly crap on their own voters in rural America. I mean, instead of offering help or solutions to rural problems, and there's some real serious problems, the GOP and conservative media instead feed them a steady diet of xenophobic and racist fear and hate. And they eat it up. I mean, the racist buffoons among them are one and a half times more likely to be QAnon followers than people who live in cities or suburbs, for example. But consider this. Democrats created and Republicans opposed virtually all of the programs that keep rural America from sinking even further into poverty and despair. Social Security, unemployment insurance, Social Security disability, Medicare, Medicaid, over 60 farm subsidy programs that funnel billions in taxpayer dollars into rural communities, food stamps, the women and infant children program, anti-addiction programs, etc. All of these were the, were the work of Democrats. The only real accomplishment of the Trump presidency was passing a $2 trillion tax cut for the morbidly rich that had virtually no effect on rural voters. Nonetheless, 71% of rural voters cast a ballot for Trump in 2020. I mean, it's pretty mind-boggling. There are still 11 mostly rural states where hospitals are closing and people are dying early unnecessarily because Republicans in those states have refused to expand Medicaid. Republicans in Congress fought against legislation to expand rural broadband access. They're constantly trying to cut or gut rural health and nutrition programs. They fought against expanding Obamacare. And that would have helped rural people, but they fought against it. You know, the, the problem here is that most of your red state Republicans know that their seat is never going to be at risk. They, you know, they, there's enough Republican voters in their district that they're never going to lose. And so they don't care about their voters. What they care about is the, the lobbyists and the big corporations and the, and the morbidly rich individuals who will pour millions of dollars into their super PACs or into their lifestyle, giving them you know tr trips on private jets and nice junkets and vacations and things, and, and you know, who, who just basically support them. And in exchange for that, these Republicans vote for you know, more holes in the tax code, more loopholes, uh, bigger fossil fuel subsidies, and they vote against efforts to lower prescription drugs or do anything about global warming. They get rich while the people who put them into office struggle to get by. Ted Cruz just got $600,000 from Clear Channel for his podcast. He, takes it, he escapes to Cancun, right? laughing at Texas voters all the way. J.D. Vance, a multimillionaire Wall Street guy, lives in an elite townhouse and travels by first class while people in Ohio watch Republican politicians gut their public schools and try to outlaw abortion and birth control. I mean, Republican members of Congress, and actually there were attorneys, uh, state, uh, state attorneys general as well, went all the way up to the Supreme Court to successfully block President Biden's first attempt at reducing student debt, while rural students contain, carry 60% more student debt than urban students by the age of 25. One of the most chilling quotes from the book is about how rural voters are willing to both abandon democracy and embrace a violent right-wing coup. Quote, 
Rural Americans are more likely to believe that it may be necessary at some point soon for citizens to take up arms against the government. Indeed, more than one out of four rural residents agree that Trump should be returned to office by force if necessary. It's amazing. Rural white voters are far more likely, more than any other democratic demographic group, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, Native Americans, they're far more likely to be willing to overturn our democracy. And the people who res represent them are in the majority of legislators who voted to overturn the 2020 election. Now, if black people, for example, were more willing to overturn democracy than any other demographic group, I can guarantee you it would be all over the news. But, hey, it's white rural Republicans, and we just always treat them with kid gloves. In fact, you know, you constantly see reporters going to these, um, uh, you know, rural diners to ask the heartland Americans what they really think. And invariably, they say something stupid, but um, it's, it's like a cliche. When was the last time, though? I mean, think about this. I've seen at least a dozen of these in the last couple of weeks, you know, where, where reporters on CNN or MSNBC or some other network go to one of these diners to ask real Americans what they think. When was the last time you saw a reporter go to Biden supporters in a city or a suburb or even in the rural areas and ask why they're voting for Joe Biden? They don't. They never ask, why are you voting for Joe Biden? The, the Biden administration has done more for rural America than any president since Lyndon Johnson. And there's a long list of all the things that they've done, or many of the things that they've done, in my article today at HartmanReport.com. And not one single Republican in either the House or the Senate voted for any of the things on this list. In fact, almost all voted against these helps to rural America. So what's going on here? Why, you know, are these people just dumb? Why do they tolerate being conned? One theory is that they hate the same people we hate. They'll put up with politicians lying to them and taking money from the fossil fuel industry while screwing their, their ability to get health care, as long as those politicians also hate on black people and Hispanic people, right? I mean, it's just, others vote Republican because the party's been so effective at branding itself with county fairs, NASCAR, country music, and the overall rural lifestyle you know, uh, uh, wearing cowboy boots and things like Ron DeSantis did, things like that. And over 1,500 radio stations daily broadcasting a right-wing Republican message to literally every nook and cranny of rural America is another, another large factor, along with the uh, Australian billionaire Lachlan Murdoch's Fox so-called news. So are these people ever going to wake up? I don't think so. But I think what we need to do is take a, cue f uh, a clue from uh, Rachel Bittekofer's new book, Hit them where it hurts. Uh, Rachel and I did a, uh, an event on this at Powell's last Friday night here in Portland. And uh, tell them, you know, start running ads in rural areas pointing out how Republicans are screwing their voters and how Democrats are helping them. I, you know, I think the Democratic Party should be doing this, and I think that you and I should be doing this. So, you know, if you want to share the message, you know, tag your it and all that. Just pass it along. It's over at HartmanReport.com. It's titled White Rural Rage, The Secret Political Force Shaping America's Future. And it's free, by the way. So, 16 minutes past the hour. I've got a whole pile of news stories here that uh, you're going to want to know about. So stay with us. We'll be right back.